Welcome to Easton, Maryland, a quaint small town on the eastern shore that transforms every fall into the home of all things waterfowling. Artists flock from around the country and about 20,000 visitors attend this event, which is positioned to coincide with the opening of Maryland's goose hunting season. All around town, galleries, local businesses, and government buildings open their doors and the streets fill with vendors offering local food and art of all kinds. This festival is really a celebration of the Eastern Shore and the Chesapeake Bay watershed. It's an art festival. Uh, it's a heritage festival, it's a sporting festival, and it's become an annual, really a homecoming for everybody on the Eastern Shore as well. So at the center of the festival is, is a world-class uh, sporting art showcase, and around the edges of that are all kinds of sporting-related activities like our Sportsman's Pavilion, the World Goose Calling Championship, and Doc Dogs, and we've got Working Dogs, we've got uh, children's programs around hunting and the outdoors. We've got food, we've got wine, we've got beer. It's just a, it's a great community festival. From the very first year, the whole mission of this was to raise uh, funds for conservation of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And uh, the original founders were concerned about the degradation of, uh, of the Chesapeake Bay and the marshes around the Eastern shore and the uh, proceeds of this goes to conservation projects every year. It's also home to a multi-day auction featuring over 500 pieces from Guyette and Dieter, headquartered nearby in St. Michael's, Maryland. What we saw this year is that the people that patronize and follow our auction now are coming into this weekend and they're getting to enjoy the aspects of the Waterfowl Festival and that was the intent and layering on top of the Waterfowl Festival weekend. We bring a lot of people to this part of the country to come visit our auction, but now in the evenings they can walk around town, eat the restaurants, stay in the hotels, and you know, go watch the dock dogs, go look at the artifacts, enjoy the other aspects of the Waterfowl Festival. I think the St. Michael's, Maryland is actually a perfect place for a decoy auction company. And, uh, Part of that is, you know, there are decoy collectors in Pacific Coast, Louisiana, throughout the Midwest. But I would bet that if you went a hundred miles from St. Michael's, Maryland, in any direction, you would capture more decoy museums, more decoy collectors, more decoy clubs, more decoy shows than any other part of the United States. This is an area where we're on the Chesapeake Bay, and the Chesapeake Bay fed the world for years. It fed the world through the migratory canvasbacks that came down, as one visual image that always comes to mind. Those canvasbacks sold to New York City hotels, Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C. We then went on to be the world supplier of oysters, and then we've got the recreational striped bass. So it's really a, a mega wonderland, and. Um, we're, we're proud to be here in the Eastern Shore and St. Michael's is a, is a fabulous location. The World Waterfowl Calling Contests are also held here and judges are brought in from around the country to decide on the best duck and goose callers in the world over the course of a couple of days. Uh, the heritage of this contest is basically built on the backbone of goose hunting on the Eastern Shore. In 1976 this contest was started and guys were coming in here with blood on their boots and they were coming in from guides and it was kind of a pride thing back when in the heyday of goose hunting and it's grown from there you know with the modernization of waterfowling throughout the decades you see this contest getting bigger and bigger and more guys getting into it this contest has built the biggest names in the industry of goose hunting and goose calling all across the nation and back then outfitting was really big on the eastern shore um, a lot of commercial outfitters and so back in those days it was more uh, bragging rights for the outfitters as far as what guide was going to win this contest and then that would help that outfitter book parties and then as time went on um, the geese started to change and and we don't winter anywhere near the geese that we did back back in say the heyday of uh, Canada goose hunting 
uh, but the contest has continued and calling over the years has, they've changed and raised the bar, but this whole Eastern Shore, Chesapeake Bay area uh, is very rich waterfowl. Um, and the, the calling contest has just been a very big part of the show uh, for the past, well, since 76. Since 1971, this festival has been dedicated to preserving the culture that surrounds waterfowl and it has raised millions for organizations dedicated to conservation. It's a pilgrimage every duck and goose hunter should make at some point in their lives to learn more about the history of the sport, have some amazing local food, and to see the current artwork and culture inspired by the things we live for.